Hello, my name is Stephanie Toman and I run the programme for the European Computer Driving Licence or as it's known ECDL or ICDL and that's the qualifications uh, that will take you through Microsoft Office uh, areas at particular levels. So the qualifications that we have at Comte University that you may be interested in or you may have already enrolled on, hence you're looking at this video, um, well, what they are is we have the ECDL or ICDL stroke ECDL core, and that's a seven unit module. And then we have a qualification called ECDL extra, which is applications only. And you have three applications with a practice exam on one of those applications. And then we have the advanced qualifications, those being uh, advanced uh, word, spreadsheets and presentations. So this video is focusing on the diagnostic test, that's the pre-test or mock test, practices if you like, those tests that you take as part of that programme. So when you enrol with us at Contra University, you get lots of videos online to, to look at and to watch and, and then you get lots of files and work files to practice with so that you're actually watching it and doing it. And then what we do is we take you through a practice paper that you can do again, just to practice those skills again. And it could be on each of the individual modules, if it's the foundation or core, and if it's the extra. With the advanced, of course, it's different sections that you would go through. So when you get to that stage where you've done your training for that module or that section, or all of the sections in the advanced uh, module, then you would take this pre-test, this online diagnostic test, which will diagnose your strengths and your weaknesses. So it will let you know what areas you may not have quite got yet, and um, you'll be able to go back and polish those up and redo them. So I've created this video, because being out there, trying to access this video with different laptops and different devices, PCs, you could all come across different things, so it's taken you through using the three different web browsers, one being Edge, Chrome, and even Internet Explorer still. So you could use those three different browsers, and it also takes you through any of the, the troubleshooting areas that you may have different uh, things ticked on your device or not uh, downloaded onto your device that you need in order to run these tests. And one of the most important things about these tests is they are run on Windows devices only. So Windows only, not MacBooks, unfortunately. So you might then decide to do these tests remotely if you're not in this area. If you are in the area, you can come into the, uh, onto the university campus and do your tests in the proper test centre. If you're not in the area, you can do these tests with us remotely, and we've been doing this for some time. And this video will also take you through that process of how you do it from a secure place. And it could be a quiet place in your bedroom, as long as nobody interrupts you. And you can do that test, uh, as you'll find out in this video, through another device, which is the MS Teams. So I hope you enjoy this video. It'll either be useful in actually getting into your diagnostic, if that's the stage you're at, or it'll be another way of um, sort of looking and assessing whether you want to take your uh, ECDL test with us and you want to do it remotely. So best of luck and let's hope it gets you through and you, enables you to do what you need to do. So next we're going to look at actually logging in to the BCS website and actually accessing one of those diagnostic tests. Okay, so we're in the BCS uh, website and it would be the web address would be the ECDL uh, UK or one word dot PSI online dot com and the rest of it is just because I've been logged in before. So if I just take that out and just show you what I mean, delete that, click on there and you can see that it will take you there. I'm just going to take my usernames out so that we've got nothing in there. And so with you, in order to check the system, you do not need to have your login, but most of you will get your login as soon as you enroll with us. So that login would be a BCS number. In other words, it starts with a BCS with some uh, numbers following. And you would use that and you would be given a passcode or password as part of that induction or that email 
to allow you to get in and then you can change it to your own password. So the first thing we're going to do is this one we're using Chrome. So we're going to show us how to do it when we're using Chrome. So this web browser, we're going to check the system requirements. This is something that you would do on all of the browsers. So we're going to click on there, scroll down, and it's this one here that we're interested in because the tests at Coventry University are going to be in the 2016 or 2019 version. In other words, they're the ones that will work on our test system. And also Office 365 will work too. So if you can get an installation of Office 365, they will be absolutely fine on here. If you take the advanced test, we have advanced versions of 365 so that you can do the test perfectly okay. With the other levels, with ECDL core or foundation, we call, which is what we call it, and the ECDL extra, it doesn't make any difference with regards to the, uh, the syllabus or the syllabi and the tools within it. They're all the same, they just look slightly different, okay? But that's what we would do, we would click on here, then the system would run through depending on what test, you know, what test system we're using. We're in Chrome at the moment, so you can see the Chrome extension. If it ran through here and you had an error, so if I just go to um, Chrome extension, PSI application, click on there. There's a PS, PSI in application extension, it's a Google extension, so I click on there. And you can see that it's actually got the extension on my system already. So if I remove that and remove, and we go back to the testing, and I go back on here and try to run that again, you can see the difference. And it should look like this. That's because you now, on your system, your laptop device or your PC, you have to then go and get this plugin okay so if you click on the chrome extension that's one we're dealing with first let's have a look at that one so click on the chrome extension takes to the page that i took you to earlier and you can find it in google by just doing what i did and use chrome extension or psi application extension you add to chrome you're adding that extension into here and you can see that language there again add that extension you make sure that it's running through and you can close that because everything's fine. And then go back to your test. If you go use it, because we've gone into two, you can go back, back, using the back arrow up here in the top left hand corner. And you can see that it's now run through beautifully. If you find that, if we just go back a moment into this, uh, where the applets are, these are large applets and these are smaller applets. You'll see here that you also have the install extension here, which is exactly the same. If you've got a plugin problem, this is the one that you would need to go to to download. It would drop it here um, in the, at the bottom of your screen. And if you double click on it, it will open it, run it very quickly. There's a wizard. And then you'll see it and it will say finish. In other words, it doesn't finish and um, but comes up with an error. Then what you can do is go to your start area at the bottom of your window, type in Windows features. on or off so it says there you've got turn windows features on or off click on there and what will happen is it will bring up a dialog box and you'll see at the very top there's something called .NET Framework 3.5 so what it needs is it needs this area to run so if you've got um, this area on the 4.8 but you haven't got this on so it's like a blank in that way then you need to tick it and then OK Okay so, okay, so we've looked at using Chrome to get to our diagnostic test. Let's say we want to use Edge instead. So we've got a pick of Edge using your start menu. And then remember the BCS uh, website, ecdluk.psionline.com. Enter that in. That takes us back to the window that you saw earlier. Exactly the same. I'm just going to take out my automatic details. Using the check system requirements link again here, we're going to check and see if this one will work. Large applets remember here and the smaller applets there. So before we download anything, we check here using the 2016-2019 version and remember Office 365 runs on this as well. 
So this is what we're checking. So first thing it's going to do is going to check the system for the plugin, checking the Chrome extensions available, and then it will also then go on to check to make sure that you do have Office 2016, 2019, or Office 365. So that is really important as well. So remember how we went to the Chrome extension, exactly the same in the Chrome. I have to then, it takes it there automatically, I have to add that Chrome extension in order for this test to work. Add it there. That's been done. And then you can go back using the back button on your internet back button. And you can see that now it's running through and then it starts to run through the office as well. So you have to wait for it to go all the way over before it's ready for you. Remember once again if you have the problem with the uh, .NET framework because that might come up as well you can type in here Windows feature on and off. Remember it's there and remember the little box here. You might have to put this on remember just like we did when we used the Chrome version. Okay so what I'm going to do next is we're going to look at using Internet Explorer here. Okay, so now we're just going to have a quick look at using the Internet Explorer, uh, that browser. So to bring that up, I can type in IE, I can type in Internet Explorer, the full thing. Or if I take that out, a lot of the time when you click in there, it's already here waiting for you. So you can click on it either way. Same as before, ecdluk.psionline.com. Pop that in. Once again, check systems here. You've got your applet 2016 2019. This time you get uh, dialog boxes coming up towards you um, on front of the screen, and you have to um, react to these. So, we want to allow the PSI application plugin, which is here, as you can see. That's what it wants to do next, and then you've got that net. .NET Framework talks about 3.5 in the Windows features from the earlier videos. So if we allow that, that runs through fine. Also, one more thing is you might get a pop-up blocker coming up here, which is like a little rectangle and a red star uh, or dot, depending on how you see it. And you have to click on that and always allow if that stops that coming through. So it allows the platform to come through. It runs across, runs through your uh, office whether it's 2016, 2019, and remember Office 365, it runs across and then you can go on, go back towards your front end, pop in your BCS number, your password, and then you can log in. Okay, so now we're going to have a look when you get into your diagnostic, what you could need to be aware of. Okay, so you need to be able to navigate around your diagnostic test and your live test. And I've got this uh, PowerPoint slide to show you how the buttons work and what they say against them so at the side and then it's slightly different when we go into the live test so just familiarize yourself initially with the diagnostic so the thing to think about with the diagnostic buttons is you can go backwards and forwards so it's something that you can do redo uh, clear using the clear button redo the question again so it's quite um, straightforward in jumping around you can navigate to a particular question through the nav button and you can flag things to go back to if you want to answer them at another time the answer button acts exactly the same in the in the live test in that you use the answer button to answer the question and move on you can clear uh, tests as many times as you like test questions in the diagnostic and you must suspend when you come out because if you suspend it means that what you can do is you can uh, let one of us know in the ECDL team that you've suspended your test you would like to get some feedback on it and what we will do is we will look in the administration system check to see what you've got incorrect because that's the, the bits that will send back to you so that you can polish up and strengthen those weaker areas and you can go in look for the questions that you've been sent back and you can navigate to them using that nav button. You can clear them down, redo them, suspend again, and then you can ask us for another feedback. Now, this is very mobile, it's very fluid. If you look at the test buttons, it's a bit different. There is no nav button because you cannot navigate around it. There is no previous 
uh, button because you cannot go to anything previously. You can only go forward, so that's why there's only a next button. And a next button will allow you to skip a question. It's a skip feature when you're in the live test. And it's like when you have a paper test, you look at all the all of the questions that you feel quite comfortable about or good about, and you always push the one or, or the ones that you're not so happy about towards the end. And that's exactly what this feature does. You click on it when you see a question you're not too sure about, you click on next, it will put it to the end. And if you do it time and time again, so if you do a number of questions with the next, they will accumulate at the end of the test once you've answered your last answer question. And then they will come back to you in the order that you, you skip them using this feature. You can then go on to answer them as you would uh, at any other time in the test. You cannot uh, use the flag because we cannot go back, remember, previously and flag things. But some people use the flag if they're doing a next on it just for their own benefit. But it will come back to you exactly as you have uh, used the next. Answer button, once again, you must use the answer button in order to move on. And you can clear a test question down once per question. And it tends to be as a last resort because when you're doing a test in a live application, for example, you can use the undo, you can re-edit something, you retype something. So you can do all of those things before you hit the answer button and you will not be penalized. The end test is to get your result and uh, then it will come up and it will tell you how you've got on. So remember, these two types of uh, ways of using the navigation button, depending on if you're doing a diagnostic or whether you're doing a live test, it's very important that you use the, them very carefully because they will help you um, get the best out of your test. Okay, so let's have a quick look at what a, a test looks like when you're going to diagnostic. So I've logged in, I'm going into here, and we're going to have a look at see what one looks like. You can see that it logs through, as we said earlier. Then you can click on the continue. It'll tell you things that are, it's aware of, and then you can click start. Okay, so it will ask you some questions. You can see the questions along the bottom here. You can see that I've got flags up. Any question that has a flag on it, you can go all the way back to the front. There's quite a lot of questions in here, as you can see. If we go to the nav button, it shows you all those questions that have been flagged. So if I take some of the flags off, they will come off and then you can close the nav button and those, those flags will disappear. Look at number six, go back in, take it off number six, close and the flags disappeared. So what you're going to do is you're going to click on something. It then allows you to answer. You click on answer and it moves on to the next thing. So this is the nature of how the diagnostic looks. This is a module one, which is IT security. So this would be probably one of the first ones that you may take. You don't have to do them in the order that they come in. You can do them in any order. Um, but this is the one that has uh, multiple choice questions only. And the, the tests do vary. We have some with um, pointing, putting an arrow on things, dragging into boxes, multiple choice like this. And we also have the live applications where you actually do it in that test. So I suspend this is the suspend test button we talk about when you want your feedback. So then you would suspend again and then it would come back to the beginning again. So uh, that's looking a really quick looking at the test. If we just do a quick one into um, uh, let's say a word let's find a we're processing this one here, it's already in progress. We just use this for demonstration purposes. Click on continue again. It's checking I've got the application as well. And once it's ready, it will go in. Start. And then in here, you'll see a slightly different look. You'll see the live word at the bottom and then the questions at the top. So what it does is if you go to a question, it'll go to it. You're in the diagnostic so you can jump around. And then this one's been answered, so you'd use the clear button down here. Then it would enable you to answer the docu the question again. So you would go to file, you would go to open, you would go down to browse to go to the uh, Z drive. The Z drive is something that's just simulated in this test, so it will only appear while you're in the diagnostic or the live test. And then you will find 
the item that it wants you to open you would just double click on it or click on it and open whichever way you do it and it does it and then you click on answer and move on to the next question so I think that's enough um, of that demo today so uh, that just gives you an idea of how these buttons work and you can have uh, get familiar with the software before you actually go into your exam so they're all quite different they're all quite unusual but you will get a feel for them and they will make you feel much more confident going into your live test if you do the diagnostic even if you know it and you think well i know this stuff anyway because we know people are gap fit but it's worth doing the test just to make sure that you get the best out of it so finally what we're going to look at is remote testing that is off campus testing for you if you don't want to come onto our campus and use our test centre. We can do off-campus um, off testing through uh, remote purposes using MS Teams and then you would log on using uh, your login to your actual test and we would then observe you do that test. So it's all very stringent and it's still conditions are still met by BCS and there will be conditions that you need to, to meet and this is just here on this slide as an example of the conditions that you would have to meet um, in order to do the ECDL uh, foundation or core as they start as they also call it there are certain requirements you need to meet so a quiet environment which is something we don't always have so I have um, booked rooms for students on those occasions where you get a secure room on, on campus and you can do your testing there. You need a webcam, you need a decent band speed, you need a good uh, Chrome or uh, one of the browsers that we've used um, installed and you need to check your test system requirements in the way that we did. The other thing you need is because we're coming through uh, Teams to do these tests, we use MS Teams to do these tests, you need to download a desktop version of MS Teams. And what happens is you will get an uh, invite from what we call a training account email and in that training account email it will be, have your module and your name in the um, subject area so you'll know it's coming. You'll go in there, you'll use that link to come to us through teams and we will pick you up on the other end and then what happens is you log into your, we take you through checking your system requirements etc again and make sure that you're aware of everything you need to be before you start your test and you would take your test from home or from a secure room and we would use where uh, teams would be used to watch you in the bottom right hand corner sitting there and then we would have the screen sharing your test whilst you're taking it and that's uh, being considered as okay by BCS and uh, you can take it that way so either way you will get your qualification your partial tests in either way and we can help with any difficulties as you come across them however you are expected to try to do as much of this as you can because we cannot have you coming into a test centre and have nothing um, ready for um, taking your test because obviously we're doing quite a few people at a time. There are certain things you have to abide by and you'll see all of this when you come to doing your uh, off-campus testing. It's pretty much the same apart from the camera bits and all of that but it's the same ideas with, with regards to conditions to taking a test. Uh, one thing just to make you uh, make clear is that when you do come through on off campus testing through to Teams, you are not all taking this together. You ha all have a separate PC that you are on, and uh, so therefore you don't see each other. Obviously, there's a lot of information to take in, but it's very important that the assessment area and pre assessment with the diagnostic is understood, and you can try and get your head around that as soon as you can. Um, to make sure that you don't get stressed at the time when you should be concentrating on your syllabus and your knowledge for these tests and not whether you can get the system working. We're there to help, so uh, if you need our help, we will do that with you. Um, but for now, I'm just going to leave that there. I just think it's really important that you get your head around this and this is hopefully helpful in doing that.